Hello, this is Dr. Martini, online sex therapist and sex educator. Welcome to the first Tuesday of the month, Salon. Every first um, Tuesday of the month, I'm approaching the topic of how to have better sex in 2023. We spent the first three months um, in the cognitive component of our sexuality and now we're moving into the very important physiological component of our sexuality, how it all functions. Um, the physiological component is mostly about arousal function. Now there's four parts to it and we're going to discuss the first two today and then the third one next month and then the fourth one the following month. So sit back and learn how to have better sex in 2023. Arousal function refers to four parts. Arousal reflex, arousal sources, arousal curve, and arousal modes. And today you're going to be learning about the first two, the arousal reflexes and the arousal sources. Now the fascinating thing about our arousal is that it is determined by two genital reflexes. So we can actually say that sexuality is a reflex phenomenon. The initiation of sexual arousal is a reflex action. It's not possible to start that action, to trigger it by at will and without stimulation. But once you have the opportunity to start your arousal, what follows then is increased blood flow towards the genitalia, which then results in vasocongestion. And that happens the same way for men as it does for women. The second reflex is for the discharge of sexual tension and happens on the threshold of the point of no return. Now, you will need to increase your sexual arousal and that can be consciously perceived. And with the right teachings and lots of practice, it can also be consciously influenced. The body gives you an indication that you have reached the point of no return through um, muscular spasm for women as much as muscular spasm for a man. And then that follows with an ejaculation from the man and also for some of the women who do know how to or, or can ejaculate. Now, it is understood, and I'm pretty sure you're aware of that, that uh, medical reasons, psychological reasons, age, and the overall health of your pelvic floor muscle system are a huge factor in allowing this increase of vasocongestion to happen, allowing the increase of arousal to happen. So, but that all can be learned. So, not to worry. The journey that we see here between first reflex and second reflex is what we call the um, arousal curve. And I'll be talking about that next month, the first Tuesday of May. So make sure you tune in if you wanna learn how to influence your arousal curve. Now we get to talk about the arousal sources. We have six of them. Imagine six buckets around your bed. The first five buckets have your senses on them, smell, taste, sound, sight, touch. Those are our sources that have been given by our body through our senses and those sources help us increase our arousal. Everybody has their own preferences. Some people are in the sight bucket completely. They need to have the lights on and they love seeing the body and some people don't. They're actually shy of having sex and you know, in daytime, so they need to have it dark. So it's good to know what your source is. Some people are going to the smell buckets and I'm personally not there. So I'm always feeling very conscious about having a clean body when I go to bed, but not everybody is the same way. And it's perfectly all right, as long as you communicate and as long as you figure out what your sources are. Now the sixth bucket is the fantasy bucket. I've been with partners before, especially towards the end of the relationship, where they were not present. They used the fantasy bucket because they already were halfway out the door of the relationship or the sexual relationship or the relationships that we were having. And um, so I use the fantasy bucket once in a while, and that is when I have a hard time really being present because I have too many things on my mind. And then I go in there a little bit just to get myself going and then I leave that bucket because I want to be present with my partner and want to be with my partner, not with somebody else. 
So those are our arousal sources. Figure out what it is that you like, which of your senses you're going to, if you're spending too much time in the fantasy bucket. But everybody is different, and as long as you communicate with your partner about it, you can harmonize that, and you can increase your arousal and help your partner increase their arousal once you know what they like, what kind of sources they use. Now you've learned part of the arousal function. We're going to continue this in the first Tuesday of May with the arousal curve, which is the journey between the two reflexes and how you can influence that. So I want to leave you with two important notes. One is that remember that the arousal reflex cannot be triggered at will or without any kind of a stimulation, which I think is a good thing. Otherwise, we'd be turned on 24-7 and that obviously cannot be sustained by our bodies. And the second thing is know your arousal sources and know your partners. So you can compare notes and you can adjust your lovemaking and your sex having to, to those sources so they, everybody benefits from it and you have an easier journey to push you all the way up to the point of no return. And third, you know, if you need any help with this, give me a call. Connect with me, send me an email, we get on the phone for a 15 minute free consultation. Thank you so much for being part of this first Tuesday of the month and for having a desire to have better sex in 2023. And I will talk to you next week.